Solving an inequality is very much like solving an equation, with one huge exception, and that's when you have a negative coefficient of x. In this, we are going to just subtract 3 from both sides, and we're going to be left with negative 2x is greater than 8. And then we're going to divide by this negative 2, and that's where the problems start. We must remember to flip the direction of the inequality sign, otherwise we will get an incorrect solution. So we get x is less than negative 4. And if you remember how to graph these, we're going to go to negative 4, and we're going to remember to put an open circle, because x doesn't actually get to be negative 4. Whoops, our circle scoot it down. We put an open circle, and then we're going to color everything that is less than negative 4. If you write your variable first, your inequality will point in the direction that you should be coloring. But what would have happened if x had been less than or equal to negative 4? The only difference in that is that we would put a closed circle because x actually gets to be negative 4 and all the numbers less than. And so that's the only difference. And now for compound inequalities. Most situations in the world can be described with a compound inequality versus just a regular one. For example, when you talk about obtuse angles, they are greater than 90 and they're also less than 180. Whenever you're talking about a range of values, you would use a compound inequality. You could use or um, if you were describing the hours of a store, instead of saying they're closed between noon and 2, if you say you need to show up before noon or after 2, you could use an or statement. So what do those look like when we graph them? Well, for solving, it's going to be the same story. We're just going to, for this or statement, we're just going to solve each problem on its own. And we'll get x is less than negative 2. Or it could also be this situation. We're going to subtract 2 from both sides. And we get x is greater than or equal to 4. So remembering when to use a solid dot and an open dot, we're going to get those in there. x is less than two, negative 2. So we're going this way. And x is also greater than or equal to 4. We're just going to stick a fourth little line in there. I'm going to write 4, put a closed circle, and off we go in this direction. And OR statements often look like they're going in two different directions. That is normal, and that is what it should look like. But what happens with AND? AND is my favorite, because you can solve two problems at once. If we want to isolate this x, we want to get rid of the 5 by subtracting it. But we need to subtract it from all areas. So we get negative 2 over here, less than or equal to, 2x less than 6. Now we're going to divide everyone by positive 2, so don't worry about flipping anything. And we're going to get negative 1, x, and 3. And this just means you're going to graph everything from negative 1 over to 3. We've got our open circle. Color it in because it's got the equal sign. Our 3, open, leave it open. And you just color everybody in between. An AND solution is the part that both of them have in common. And it should look like that. 